Good morning, and welcome to the Marketing Rocket Fuel Show. My name is Michael. This is Drew. Drew hey there. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Michael. Um, I'm just, I'm so excited. We're in the new Escape Plan Studio. So we, we've got the move completed, and uh, and so I've got to, got a few things uh, here behind me. Um, got some some cool stuff all surrounded by stuff I love. Um, but, uh, but more than that, I, I'm in a much more functional workplace here and, uh, and I'm excited to have this move complete. The home is sold. I am officially no longer a homeowner and, uh, and have given up all of the rights, privileges and responsibilities therein. So well, I, I tell you, uh, I'm not really sure. It's probably been, uh, updated, but I remember uh, a move, uh, moving being one of the most stressful things a family uh, can can go through, uh, along with uh, a, a myriad of other things. How was it on a scale from one to 10? Uh, how stressful was this move for you and your family? Uh, you know, I'm going to say it was probably about a five. Um and the reason it was about a five and not like a, an eight or a nine um, is because I had a realtor that helped us uh, go down the happy path instead of the crappy path <laughs> on this. I mean, we definitely had some hurdles in the road and some things that, you know, we needed to take care of and some, you know, some negotiation and all that. But I can't imagine if I had tried to sell this myself. Yeah, how, it's, yeah. How a lot of people, a lot of people try to do that. They're trying to save a buck or two. And and look, mm -hmm. you know, I am sure there are cases where someone does does it by themselves, and it's a and it's a smooth and it's smooth sailing. Um, but I have uh, I'm I've I am a recovering realtor, and <laughs> um, and I have seen uh, more often than not somebody trying to sell a home uh, themselves and. Uh, either uh, the deal falls apart or, uh, you know, the buyer comes back um, probably uh, uh, maybe up to a year later with things. And because things were done uh, sort of uh, amateurishly, uh, it, it didn't and it didn't have it wasn't the happy path you were talking about so well and, and i tell you what our realtor earned her six percent there you go you know and um and you know the things that we wouldn't have even thought of as being being necessary or or figuring out our way through uh she negotiated us through uh with ease and uh and so we were really really thankful for that. And, and I'll put a link to her website in the description of this podcast. Cause I want to give a shout out to Jenna Jorday over at premier South realty. Uh, if you're in, in the Charlotte area, uh, they're, they're a great uh, agency to work with. And I, I promote them all day long for free because she, she said she did a fantastic job. Fantastic. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's interesting when you hire the right people, when you've got the right people doing the right stuff for you, how much smoother things go and, and how much money you actually end up saving in the long run. Because if, if we had tried to do this ourselves, I mean, we would have spent a lot more money than we did fixing up the house or getting things ready. Um, and, um, and we've dealt with realtors before, um, you know, and as in any other profession, you've got your really good ones and your not so happy path ones. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, you know what? This is episode one of season two in Marketing Rocket Fuel. Do you believe we're actually through season one? Yeah, we're ready like to change and change paths and do something new here. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, we're calling this season. These are the people on your marketing team. <laughs> I could, I could hear the Sesame street song uh, <laughs> rolling in my head. Yeah. I'm not going to sing it cause I don't want to get copyright <laughs> strikes. So, um, but, um, but this season we're going to talk about who your marketing team is, what each role is and what they do. And, and, you know, when it's appropriate to hire out an agency or to outsource those tasks and when it's appropriate to put them 
in internally on your marketing team. Uh, today, today specifically, we're going to be talking about when not to hire a marketing agency. Um, and this is a you between Michael and myself, we've got over forty years of agency experience, and uh, we're going to tell you when you shouldn't hire a marketing agency in today's episode. Well, it's it's crazy. We're in episode two. It's like we jumped into the DeLorean, and um, we uh, have. Uh, gone back to the future and, and and we're in season two but yeah so um a, a a quick tidbit on the agency side um and this is just behind the curtain being transparent as an a former agency owner uh some of the most uh joyous times was when we would fire a bad client mm -hmm. it was so satisfying to fire a bad client and um, and I will take the blame for, um, going uh, or signing on a bad client. And so we're trying to, in, in, in a cup, we're trying to do a couple things here. We're trying to keep you from hiring an agency, uh, that isn't a good fit because they will fire you. Um, and we're, we're going to try to keep you from, uh, jumping into a relationship with an agency when maybe that's not the best thing for you and your business. So now, now to be clear by bad clients, we don't necessarily mean they're bad people well, some or, of them are. or their company. Well, <laughs> yeah. When, <laughs> but, uh, but that's not necessarily what we're talking about. We're not talking about a company that's, that's bad or, or something like that, but we're talking about when you're not ready to hire an agency and you do, right. or when you should be, you know, you might be at the point where you should be doing things internally, or you might be at the other end where you should be DIYing things. Um, but there's a, there's a sweet spot when it's perfect to hire an agency. And if you're not in that spot, you can, things can go south in a hurry. Um, you know, because, you know, it's, it's almost like, if I had hired movers three weeks before I was ready to move and, um, and said, Hey, show up at my house and I'm not ready to put them to work. Um, you know, that, you know, the movers are, I'm, I'm going to spend a lot of money because, you know, they're paid by the hour right. and, um, and I'm not going to get anything done. Or even and, a better, re a, a, another an a way to look at that analogy is, is what if, um, you know, you hire a moving company, uh, that uh, it focuses on commercial moves and they show yeah. up with, with two 18 wheelers uh, and there's really, they, 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 there's not even enough to fill in one. So um, there, there's different things you need to look at when hiring an agency. It has to be a good fit. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, Drew, it has to be, has to be the right time. That's right. That's right. So, uh, so let's get into and talk about, um, let's talk about the different types of agencies there are, um, and, um, and then, um, talk about how this relationship can go. And then we'll get into, um, the different types, the different stages of your company and when you should be and should not be hiring an agency. Um, so initially, you know, I, I talked a little bit about, uh, you know, this isn't the first realtor we worked with, with our, with our home. Uh, we were in our home for 10 years and 10 years ago, we worked with another realtor. Now at that time we had not purchased a home in a long time. And we really didn't know what we didn't know. We didn't know what we were doing, but, uh, but we had a realtor who was much more interested in selling us the maximum house we could get for our maximum budget than coaching us through the process of getting us in the right home for us. Now our home was a great home for, for us for 10 years. Um, but there were certainly some things in there that, uh, that that realtor did not do that our other realtor um, would have. And, um, and so there were some things like uh, the, the realtor didn't get a survey done uh, before we bought the house. We didn't even think about that until um, we were getting our home done and there was a survey and it turned out that the city had not marked um, a, an, an alleyway 
that um, that apparently was still on the city map that hadn't been there for since like 1950. And so part of our property extended into that alley, alleyway. And so they were like, you're intruding on the alleyway here. Well, there's no alley there. It's all overgrown and there's telephone poles in the middle of it. And there's a house in the middle of it on the other end. Um, but, you know, things like that, if we had gotten a proper survey done early on in the process, uh, when we bought the home, we would have known those things and been able to address them 10 years ago instead of when we're trying to sell the home. Um, so that's just one of those things. The same thing goes when you're hiring an agency. You can get some agencies that will walk you through everything and be completely transparent and really think about what you need. Or you can get agencies that are just trying to sell you a product that are just trying to sell you a cookie cutter box that you that is the thing that they want to sell, not necessarily the thing that you need. Now, there are times when those cookie cutter products are exactly what you need, but you've got to line that up. You've got to match that up. Um, so you, the first thing you want to look for in an agency, though, is an agency that's going to listen to you and understand what your needs are and be willing to walk away if it's not a good fit, because that's in your best interest. If the agency realizes early on that this is not a fit and you don't want to go down a road where they, where everybody knows it's not a fit, it, be, it becomes miserable for everybody. Yeah. Um, so so let, let me jump in here real quick. So, yeah. um, you know, the, the types of agencies that are out there, you're, you're going to get um, agencies that I call these, they're, they're specialists. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to get agencies that only focus on social media. You're going to get agencies that only focus on pay-per-click. Uh, now, you may ask them to do other things, and they may partner with another agency. Uh, you know, you may hire a pay-per-click um, agency, uh, and, and the relationship's so good that you ask them, well, well do you do copywriting or do you do content and they're like oh we we'll, we'll, we really don't do that but we we do partner with another agency i think a red flag is a, an agency uh unless unless they're a full what they call us a full full service agency uh, mm -hmm. but an agency that just says yes to everything uh right. that seems like uh they position themselves as uh, we're great we're fantastic at everything and those are few and far between. You're talking an agency that that does that, a full full service agency like that. Um, they're they're hard to find. Um, they are should be wonderful to work with if they do everything well. Uh, but <laughs> just be be on the lookout for for uh, in the, in the notes. I love it. A yes, men. Some somebody that's just like, yep, we do that. And um, yep. Yep. And then, mm -hmm. um, with, without them asking any really tough questions, they don't, they don't ask great questions like, you know, why are you here? You know, what does your marketing look like now? Right. Um, you know, tell me about your past relationships with your other agencies you've worked with. And, you know, because that agency is interviewing you as well. And, the, mm -hmm. and I'm speaking from as an agent, a former agency owner that didn't ask these up front. Right. Um, and then, I mean, we've all been down that path we where, where we, you know, we were, we were all young once. Yes. So a long time ago. <laughs> so um, that, that kind of, I want to circle back because we almost skipped over and I, I just want to uh, real quick, just kind of go through what are the different types of agencies. And Michael, you touched on one of them, which is that specialized agency that does really one or two things and uh, and then they they either outsource or they just help connect you with other companies that do the other things. Yes. Um, and so that's a, a specialized agency. And sometimes it'll just be an individual freelancer. Right. Um, and so sometimes you'll you'll outsource to multiple freelancers um, to to get the job done. Um, the next type of agency is an agency that's got a product like or a suite of products that they sell as a package. Um, and so you've got this this package deal and you're kind of in into their software, if you will, or, or their their um, app or their software as a service, whatever they call it. Um, and they 
they're not necessarily an agency per se. They're more of a software developer that makes a product and they've got some people on their staff that can help you use that product. Um, and so we see that a lot. There's some, some, some companies that, uh, that have everything from building a website to sending out email campaigns to handling your Google ad campaigns all in, all in one type of app. And, and so the, the pros of that is you've kind of got all of those things in one place, but the cons to that is you're kind of locked into something and you can only do what that software does. And so, you know, and, and I mean, the prices will vary. I mean, you may save money on that. You may not, you may actually spend more money for that, for that type of software. Um, the third type of agency is more of a full service agency. Um, and this doesn't necessarily mean they do everything, but they do a lot of the things that you're going to need. And you're not going to necessarily need to outsource to another company to get your marketing done. They have the connections where they can bring everything in through their agency and, and get everything done for you, even if they're not doing it all with their in-house team. Right. Um, that's the type of agency I have. Um, so escape plan marketing, we're a full service agency and there are specific things that we do in house. Uh, we do, uh, branding, website development, uh, social media, the, the ongoing content and the pay-per-click ad campaigns. We do all of that stuff in house, you know, things that we would outsource are things like making television commercials or, or, um, or doing radio radio buys and things like that. Those are things that we're just not specialized in and we're going to be transparent with our client. We can connect them with the people or we can we can make those connections for them and and so they're only paying one agency for everything. But, you know, we know what we're good at and we also are transparent about what we're not good at, but we connect to the people who are. And so that's a you know, that's a the third type of agency. And then, of course, you've got the be mega agencies that are working with like Fortune 500 companies. Um, and these are agencies that basically they sign on for millions of dollars and uh, and they just do it all for the, for the company. And um, and, you know, that's a, a much higher relationship than than the scope of what we're talking about here, because we're we're dealing with small business to mid-sized companies. Um, so that's really your, your types of agencies that you're going to deal with. Um, so what does, um, what are some of the red flags, Michael, that, uh, that come up when somebody should starts looking at um, whether or not they should hire an agency? Well, so, so for me, um, uh, an immediate red flag uh, is is an agency that is not willing to um, take the posture of of educating you first. Mm -hmm. um, and and so a good agency and your agency does this puts out content um, free of charge so that the audience that they're looking for um, uh, they've offered some value up front. And, um, you know, it, it, the analogy that I always bring up or, or the example I always bring up is no one ever wants to be pushed. Like, right. it's an awful feeling when you get pushed from behind. Mm -hmm. It just feels like you're being rushed. It feels like you're being, you're, someone's trying to take advantage or someone's trying to push their agenda on you. Um, mm -hmm. It's a wonderful feeling. Uh, when you're in a situation that you may not be comfortable in or that's strange or new for somebody to put their hand out and lead you through um, your situation, lead you through um, the process. And I think if an if you are dealing with an agency and you don't feel like they're taking you by the hand and leading you through the process, that's an immediate red flag. Uh, you know, you can walk away as friends, but I'm not sure if you want to be stroking a check to that agency. Uh, that's a that's a really good point. Um, we want to make sure that um, that when as a company, when you're hiring an agency, that that you don't feel like it's a high pressure sales 
thing. I mean, we're not, uh, it shouldn't feel like you're, you're buying a used car uh, or something like that. You know, it, it should feel more like, Hey, this is a company that's going to guide me through the process and, and everything they do shouldn't be a mystery to you. I call that voodoo, right? You know, a lot of, a lot of agencies, a lot of web developers, um, because of the, the nature of digital marketing in particular, um, they, they like to, they don't like to reveal the secrets of what they do and, and the voodoo behind everything. And so it's all a mystery and it's nebulous and, and they like to use words that, that most people don't understand and, and acronyms that people don't, uh, don't know, uh, to try to make themselves sound smart. And they try to, they try to push their own value by making themselves seem smart. Um, when in fact, they're just basically doing the same things that other agencies do right. um, that, you know, yes, they've got a skill set that you may not possess, but an agency that's confident in their skill sets is not going to be afraid of you knowing how they did something right. or why they did something. Right. And so those are, those are really important. I've, I've said it before on this podcast, transparency is extremely important to me as an agency owner. I don't want my clients to to not know what they're paying for and why they're paying for it. And if they've got questions, I'm not afraid to kind of show them under the hood. Here's what we did. Right. You know, um, am I in the business to teach you how to build a website, to teach you how to design a logo? No, I'm not. But if I, if I'm going to design a logo and, or our graphic designer is going to design a logo and we present that to you, we're going to know why we designed it the way we did. And we're going to be able to explain that to you and why it's a benefit to do it the way that we do it, because we're leading you through that process because we're most interested in your success. We're more interested, more focused in your success really than our success, because we realize that your success is our success. You, you know, go. if if an agency is really more focused on selling you the product or program, uh, it's a it's a red flag. Right, right. Um, uh, you know, other red flags. Uh, like you mentioned, it there should be uh, there should be a natural ease to this. You should not feel mm -hmm. rushed or pressured, um, because a a a great uh, a solid uh, marketing agency is going to know uh, that um, that it's going to be a considerable investment and not mm -hmm. an expense. And you know, we we're, right. we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit as far as the mindset uh, that you should have when hiring an agency. But um, uh, uh, you know, ha being rushed into something, um, you know, when it comes to your marketing and and how um, your, your company is perceived out there publicly. That's not something that you, you want to feel pressured into. Yeah, that's right. And, and on the other end, you know, there's a red flag you can look for in yourself. If you're looking for a company just to perform tasks, if you're looking, if you say, okay, um, I need X amount of social media posts a month. I need three email blasts a month. I need a blog post every month. And you want to prescribe how to do everything as your, as the business owner. Um, that should be a red flag to you that maybe it's not going to be a good fit for you to work with an agency because you're not necessarily just hiring people to perform tasks. You're hiring people to bring their expertise to the table to help you promote your business. And you want to, you're hiring their mind. You're not just hiring uh, a trained monkey. Right. Um, if you want to, if you want to tell somebody how to do everything as the business owner, hire somebody at minimum wage and, and sit there and look over their shoulder. Right. Um, if you, if you want somebody to come in and help you achieve your goals and, uh, and help guide you on that path, hire an agency. Love that. Love that. So, um, let's see. So let's talk about, uh, um, you talked a, a minute ago about the mindset that you need to have as a business owner towards your marketing. 
Uh, and I think this is something that's really important before we get into um, the, the clear uh, no, no, yes of whether you should hire an agency. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, that mindset, most companies get caught uh, with looking at marketing as an expense, that it's not going to offer any sort of return, that it's just table stakes. It's the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. And as long as you, you have that mindset as a business owner, that it's just, it's just another expense. It's like the electricity bill. Mm -hmm. um, then, then there will always be minimal return there. It's, it's, right. you know, your, your, your expectations will be so low for the marketing efforts that um, you'll always blame it uh, and look at it as, as something that is, is a hole in, in, a, in your bucket. Uh, that's just draining, draining profits. Um, right. A, a healthy mindset when it comes to marketing is that you are investing. Uh, an investment is something that you put money into and you get a return out of. And, mm -hmm. you know, w when it comes to digital marketing, your, your biggest asset, and we've talked about this before, is, is your website. That needs to be looked at as an asset, an asset that grows in value. And how does right. that happen? That happens through great content. That happens through proper maintenance. That happens through updating. That happens through driving traffic to it and adjusting based on your audience. Um, having a proper mindset when it comes to your marketing will lead you, will help lead you to an agency that, uh, that aligns with that, with that mindset. You drew, you, you mentioned some of these agencies that are just in it for, uh, for a paycheck. Right. Uh, well then, yeah, that if, if that's all, if that's how you look at your marketing for your company, then go right ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, just, just view it as an expense, hire an agency. What'll happen, uh, more often than not is you just keep burning through these agencies one, mm -hmm. one right after another, because you're not seeing results. And you'll right. fire that agency and hire one just like them, and you'll fire them too. Uh, but until you start looking at your marketing as as an investment and get aligned with an agency that mirrors that and is aligned with that, you know, th there's always going to be a little bit of a struggle there. And that's right because, um, you know, if you – the thing that will happen is not only will you burn through those agencies – but you won't know why you're not getting the results. Yep. You won't have an understanding of how you can change that to actually get results because the agency is focused on, I'm going to just churn out some articles. But if you're, if you're instead setting smart goals and saying, let's work together to determine how we're going to achieve these smart goals. Uh, smart goals are time-based achievable goals. You know, they're, they're goals that have a clear success line. And so you want to have, you want to set those goals with your agency and be able to measure against those goals and be able to see if you're tracking towards those goals or you need to make adjustments. And, and so as a business owner, especially if you're a smaller business owner and you're outsourcing to an agency, you have got to get results or you're going to burn through your cash and you're going to wind up with no operating capital left. Um, and I think, let, it, let me just put a cap on that or tie okay. a bow on that. So, you know, I, I think larger companies um, are starting to realize this. And even if your, your company is, is, um, small and not enterprise. We're not talking fortune 1000 companies here. We're talking right. small businesses, you know, 500 employees or, or less, um, you know, exactly the type of businesses, businesses that you work with drew, um, mm -hmm. these companies are learning. Uh, and what I've have seen, um, I work with some enterprise companies now with my current company, uh, is that, they are realizing that marketing is an uh, is an investment is something that you need to uh, to focus on and realize an investment. And so, the model that larger companies are looking at now is you'll have a revenue ops team, so revenue operations. Um, oh, I'm I'm sorry. You'll have a sales ops team, say, mm -hmm. sales operations. Then you'll have a marketing ops team, marketing operations, and they all meet in the middle at revenue. And right. so the model is not 
marketing first and then they pass everything to sales and then they go do their thing it's symbiotic they're working together to generate right. revenue that's right um and i i i don't know i've seen this so many times where where you know sales and marketing don't talk to each other right or companies just they just burn through i i guess we're just really kind of hammering this point home the point of marketing is not to burn through cash right. the point of marketing is to make you money now as a small business um and you know we're defining that as under 500 employees um as a small business you know you should realistically be spending anywhere from 7 to 10% of your revenues on marketing um that number there is a big shock to a lot of yeah. a lot of companies. You know, when we're working with companies, um, generally, I mean, our sweet spot is really in in the one to twenty million range. Um, you know, we'll go up to about fifty million um, in uh, in the companies that we work with. Um, but even in that range, especially in the seven figure range, a lot of business owners really kind of get smacked upside the head with that kind of number because they start thinking about, okay, what is seven to 8% of $4 million? That's a big number. And, and they start thinking, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. But when you kind of come back around and say, okay, yes, but that can help me get to six, seven, ten million million. Right. Right. That becomes a smaller number when you're looking at it from that return perspective. Right. All right. Let's. Uh, um, we're we're going. Uh, we're going a while here on this particular point. So let's talk about specifically who should and who should not hire an agency. Um, so, okay. If you're a big company. Um, and um, or even a large small business, and you have a mature marketing structure, you've got a marketing team already in place, and um, and it's the appropriate headcount without. <coughs> excuse me, holy cow! <clears throat> I almost choked on this one. <laughs> you've got an appropriate headcount, people who are getting things done, and you need them to. And they're working your plan and you've got that team in place already, then you probably don't need to outsource to an agency. Um, these are companies that are, you know, typically, you know, over 20 million in sales um, annually, maybe between 20 and 100 million in sales Um is when you when you start bringing people in house to do this, um, and that number can vary. You know, it depends on the product that you're making and the size of your staff. Um, you know, like I said, we tend to work with companies maybe up to fifty million in sales, um, because you know, in there there's there's some some wiggle room there. Um, but if you are a large enough company and you've got that mature marketing team and you've got the staff and you need them every member of that team every day, then you should not hiring an agency. You shouldn't be outsourcing to uh, an agency uh, like my agency. Now, if you're a larger company, you might be outsourcing to a Madison Avenue type of agency. That's not the type of agency we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, the, the boutique type of agencies. Uh, we may be full service, but we're small and nimble. Um, you shouldn't be outsourcing to an agency if you're that size company. On the flip side, if you're just starting your business or if you're a one, two, three person show, something something along that line, you're on a shoestring budget, um, you're, maybe your business is a storefront, uh, maybe it's in the garage, maybe it's a, um, um, you know, I don't want to say just to work from home because, you know, there are plenty of good sized businesses that, <laughs> that operate from homes these days. Uh, that's become much, much, much more commonplace. I've, you know, I've been transparent. I operate out of my home and, uh, and all of our staff is remote. Um, it's a great way to save money as a business. But if you're, if you're a business that, um, that maybe you're, you're newer or you're just operating on a shoestring budget, you don't have, 
a, a marketing budget of that seven to eight percent, don't hire an agency. You need to be bootstrapping this thing, getting out there, um, watching YouTube videos like this one, learning how to market for yourself. Um, and a lot of marketing agencies, they're going to cringe when I say that because they're like, no, no, you should hire us and our fantastic box or program in a box. And you will get email after email after email from companies and plenty of spam calls from companies that are trying to sell you that box. Don't buy the box. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. Do not buy the box because the box is almost never in your benefit. It's almost always in their benefit. And it ends up being something you sink a lot of money into without getting returned. At this stage in your business, you know your business better than anybody else. As the founder of your company or as the president or whatever you want to call yourself of the company, um, I find a lot of people at this stage call themselves CEO because they want to sound bigger than they are. Um, and, you know, I did the same thing when I first started out. I was like, I'm the CEO of a marketing agency, and, and even when it was just me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, but at that stage, you should really be out there doing this. You should be doing social media. You should be learning how to learn how to use your phone. I'm, I'm not saying do it in a crappy way. I'm not saying, you know, half-heartedly do this. I'm saying give it all you've got, but you should be the one giving it all you've got. Don't just hire the youngest person you can find and have them in charge of your social media monitor what that's doing and start expecting a return. Because what I would like to see happen with your company is you grow to that point where you do need an agency. But you're never going to do that as long as you treat marketing as a side function. Right. Um, and I can give you a really good example of this. Um, so there's a local restaurant that, that we like to eat at. It's a relatively new restaurant. Uh, we, we tried it. It's near our new house. And, and, um, They've got great Vietnamese food and um, and the guy's pretty much doing it himself. But when I went there to eat, you know, we we did the whole um, the whatever his uh, POS uh, sale thing is and tapped my card and asked me for my email address. He's emailing me regularly with stuff that is actually great content. It's actually good to read and it's not like massively huge or anything like that but he's saying hey have a night in with your family order food here and watch a movie you know he's recommending anime movies uh and things like that um and he's he's finding creative ways to market his business and you know what we did we went back mm -hmm. because the food was good the service was good and he keeps reminding me that he's there and I, I'm very forgetful. Um, you know, half the time I get in halfway through this podcast and I forget what I'm talking about. And so most people are kind of that way in today's culture. Yeah. But if you keep reminding them that you're there, he's going to grow. And and I think his restaurant, he focused more on those three things, providing good service, good food, and reminding people he's there. If you do that with your business, you're going to grow and you're going to add staff and you're going to get to that place where you can say, yes, I need an agency. Well, what is that place? So um, when the company becomes bigger than you, when you get to the place where you've got facilities, you've got staff, you've got, um, you've got budget, you've made some money, you're not maybe, maybe you're not independently wealthy yet, but you've made some money where you can invest, continue to invest back into your business. You've, you've got equipment, you've got things like that. Put marketing as a budget item, carve out seven to 8% of that revenue of your projected revenue for marketing and start talking to agencies, start talking to somebody. Now at this point you may be saying, Oh, well, why wouldn't I hire somebody in at this point? Because at this point, it's going to cost you so much more to hire the staff that you need 
that it's much, 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 much more cost effective to hire an agency. Um, so what am I talking about there? Well, when you're, when you're getting an agency, you're typically getting a marketing director, a, um, a production manager, a graphic, some graphic designers, maybe one, maybe multiples. You're getting copywriters. You're getting website developers. You're getting social media coordinators. You're getting, uh, what am I leaving out there? You're getting videographers, photographers. You're getting all of these people for one price. Whereas if you're hiring out, even if you just hire a marketing director, the median salary, and this is, this is Charlotte numbers, but the median salary for a director of marketing for a mid-sized company is around $100,000 to $120,000 a year. And that does not include taxes, software, equipment, um, renting your space. They may work remote. They're probably not going to be at that stage, but um, it's all of the stuff that you need that comes along with it. And they're still going to have to outsource because they're one person and they can't do everything. They can coordinate things, um, but they're, they're not, you're not going to find one person that just does everything. And if you, even if you do, even if it's a lower level, um, maybe it's not a marketing director. Maybe it's your marketing guy. Your, you know, you hire somebody to do your website or to do the marketing. Um, you know, maybe they're even a sixty thousand dollar a year salary. Um, you know, we cut that in half, and but you still have equipment, taxes, all all of that stuff, and that person's going to get burnt out. They're going to be burning the candle at both ends, and. You're going to be like, why am I spending, you know, you end up spending $100,000 a year on that person. And you're like, what am I getting in return? Whereas if you hire an agency, you know, you may be spending five to $10,000 a month just for the agency fees and then some other things on top of that. But you're getting that entire team of people who are working towards your goals. Um, that, that's really the advantage of hiring an agency at that point. Um, you know, if you're, if you're looking at, um, you know, 8% of a million dollars a year, you know, you're looking at about $80,000 a year. Um, so, you know, just, and kind of double that for each million or, you know, increase that for each million you go up. Um, but even if you're, if you're trying to be a $4 million company and you're looking at, you know, what is four times eight, 30 to $32,000 a year or, or $320,000 a year, rather, the return that you're getting on that, you're not just paying that all in agency fees. Agency is going to be actually a, a relatively small percentage of that. Yes. Um, but then you've got money for the advertising, the Google ads, the pay-per-click, the social media, all of, all of that stuff, and, um, and any of the incidental incidentals that you need, you're still going to end up saving money over hiring that staff and having to buy all the extra stuff. Uh, so even if they, you know, the larger end of that, you're still saving a lot of money by hiring an agency at that point. Um, the point you shouldn't hire an agency is when that becomes a tipping point to where you're spending more um, to do the agency work that you need because your company has grown so much that you need to start bringing things in house. And sometimes that can be a hybrid process because you don't necessarily need to bring everybody in house at once, but maybe you need to bring somebody in to kind of manage the relationship with the agency. And then you bring, you know, individuals in one by one. So. No, th those are all great points. You know, uh, we are uh, in um, let's just say, um, uh, unstable financial times now. Um, <laughs> things, things uh, we don't know what the future holds. We never do, but the, it's right. it's not been very positive. If if you're out there looking at the economy, and what I am seeing are companies actually um, that have um, the size and the budget um, to have a lot of things in house. I am seeing companies um, getting rid of headcount. And moving mm -hmm. to the agency model because That's they right. know 
that, and you've mentioned this, that uh, with that agency model, uh, that spend c- can expand and contract based on on revenue. Now, you know, I was I, when I had my agency, we had a retainer model, um, mm-hmm. but some agencies uh, will will won't do the retainer model. They just have a, a block of hours, um, depending on what the company needs. So, I think the take home message there is just do the calculus, right? Right. Uh, number one, uh, you you talked about this. Uh, grow the company to the point where you're not just, it's not just you. Uh, and then uh, hire an agency based on uh, them doing things that either you can't do anymore because it's more than you or that you don't want to do anymore or that right. you stink at. I mean, uh, that's one of the advantages of being able to hire an agency. For, forget the cost savings. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're, if you're the owner of a business and you don't want to, or you're not good at, and you shouldn't be doing certain things as a business mm-hmm. owner. There's probably three to four things that only you can do as a business owner. Uh, right. Everything else, everything else, you should either hire for or outsource for. And, right. uh, and somebody we're... else can post your pictures yes. on social media. Absolutely, you don't have to do that as the CEO. And in a couple uh, a couple of episodes, we're going to be talking about the CEO bottleneck. There you uh, go. That, because you are one of the people on your marketing team. Yes. Uh, but you may not be doing the role that you should be in that. So let's um, let's go ahead and start wrapping things up. I, I know that one of the points that we that we were going to talk about, and hopefully we have time to talk about this, is actually deliverables uh, that an agent sh- agency uh, you should look for um, from an agency, and so. Uh, one of oh the, yeah, we skipped right we over skipped that section. Right over we? that. So one of the things. See what I mean about forgetting things. Absolutely. That's why. That's why we write things down. Um, right. There's four things that we talked about in the pregame uh, that you should look for as far as deliverables from your agency. You know, one of them is a framework, uh, an mm-hmm. operating system, uh, something that they can hand you, and this is uh, and this is the system your marketing flows through. They should also mm-hmm. offer you a strategy and a plan. Uh, that's vital. If, if you don't have that, they should hand you something that looks like a roadmap for, for your marketing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then other things, um, you know, like content production, just the, the swinging of the hammer and making stuff um, that right. you're, that you're, that resonates with your customer base. And this is the final one and we can touch on other ones, but I love this one that there's a coaching aspect um, that an agency can provide you because they are, they're far enough away from your business to, to where they've got perspective. You know, I talk right. about it. I talk, I say it all the time. You know, sometimes it's so hard for an owner to be the marketer of his company because it's like reading a beer bottle label from inside the bottle. They're just, That's right. they're just too close to the business. And so there's a coaching aspect because an agency will have perspective and there's a, you know, we're part-time therapists when it comes That's to right. dealing with uh, business owners. Uh, Drew, do you have anything to add to, to that list? You know, or want to expound uh, on that. Therapy is, is the, the, biggest thing right there. I mean, it's just when you're in your business, um, you should be working with an agency that's not afraid to tell you when, you know, there's something that needs to change. There's something that needs to, but also to tell you when, when you're doing things right. Um, and to encourage you sometimes it's, and I've seen this a lot, sometimes working with CEOs, especially of that, that small business, it's so easy to look at things on a week by week and, and kind of, you kind of get pulled this way and that way and chasing after squirrels. Um, and when you're doing that, you're not operating in a plan. You're just chasing after squirrels. And, and, and I, I don't want to get too much into, cause it's all, we're doing a whole episode on this, but but when you're chasing squirrels, you're not operating with a plan and your agency can help you stay the course on a plan and they'll know when you need to adjust course. But it but it's not going to be a constant. Oh, well, I'm going this way now. I'm just turning this way. 
you know, it's not going to be constant that it's, it's, I'm going this way and I'm starting to go off course a little bit. So I'm going to just veer this way. You know, I start to do this and I veer this way. And so it's a much more gentle course correction for you uh, when you're working with that agency. And sometimes as a business owner, and this is something that I, I, I say this a lot when I'm giving presentations as a business owner, it is really, really, really easy to battle depression. You, you get burnout, you get depressed, you, you look at numbers and they're not what you think they're going to be, or even if they are, you think you can do better and, and you beat yourself up a lot. And, um, and depression is very common among business owners and it's okay to talk about it. This is one thing when you go to networking events and everybody says the same thing. Oh yeah, business is great. You know, everything's going great. You know, I'm doing awesome. And you know in your heart that it's a lie. Right. It's okay to talk about how you're feeling as a business owner. And, in, and a lot of times your agency partner will be the person that you talk to about that, that you're, that you're fully transparent, that you're honest. Um, you know, I'm a runner. And one of the things I was listening to, I, I listened to uh, – uh, Coach Chris Bennett, the head of Nike running uh, in my while I'm running, he coaches me along. I'm not personally, you know, it's I'm listening just to <laughs> that, that would be really awesome if he was. But oh, fantastic. Uh, but, you know, one of the things he said in the in the run yesterday when I was running was that as a coach, um, you want to be able to talk people through to be their best. Um, but in order to do that, you have to be honest, right? If you're not honest with your coach, they're not going to be able to help you be your best. And so, so that's a really important part of working with your agency as a business owner, you've got to be completely transparent and honest with them. You know, we work with companies and they let us see their books. We know whether they're making or losing money. And that's really important for me as a, as an agency, because we want to, we, we've got to know where the soft spots spots are so we can firm those up. Right. So, all right. So let's, uh, let's get into this week's action tip or this month's action tip. Uh, by the way, we're, um, uh, in marketing rocket fuel, we're, we're going to a monthly podcast, uh, because, Frankly, uh, Michael and I both have full-time jobs <laughs> in our agencies, and we are busy people. Um, but we still want to be able to provide this content for you. So watch for us about once a month on for new podcasts. And uh, and season two here is going to go uh, well into 2023. Uh, we're really excited about some of the things coming up. But uh, so our action tip. Right now, Michael, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so what we want you to do is put pen to paper or fingers to keyboard and um, put together what your marketing dream team would look like. Uh, and this includes, you know, all the roles and we've talked about them. And if you need some help on, on what roles you should be hiring for, you know, reach out to Drew uh, and he'll be able to, to get that to you. But roles, salaries, equipment, software, taxes, office space, um, you know, it, you know, um, spoiler alert, uh, this is going to add up very quickly, but go ahead and, and put down what your marketing dream team, uh, would look like. Um, we'd love to see some of these if you want to send these in, uh, so that mm -hmm. we can review it, maybe, maybe feature one, uh, in the later episode, but, um, I think you'd be surprised, uh, and I would be shocked if it's actually a lower number than what you have in your head when you start. So that's that's what we're we're asking you guys to do. Um, put together uh, your list of your marketing dream team and estimate how much it would cost to, to hire that team out. So uh, we'd love to see that, Drew. Before we close out, do you want to give the spiel? about our sponsor uh, <laughs> and what we could be looking forward to in season two. That's right. Uh, so um, Marketing Rocket Fuel is sponsored by Escape Plan Marketing. Uh, we, we, 
Ah, gee whiz, we we make rocket fuel. <laughs> I, I was going to try not to use the word rocket fuel in it, but it's what we do. We make rocket fuel. Um, we are a full service boutique agency, and we work with uh, with mid sized companies just like you uh, to to help you get those help you reach your marketing goals. Uh, we are that company that sits down with you that you can cry on our shoulders or you can laugh with us and. Um, and we're there to help guide you to help you grow as a business. Um, and uh, so if you want to if you want to sit down with us and uh, see if we might be a good fit for you, reach out to us at escapeplanmarketing.com. And if you uh, book a discovery call, we will give you our free marketing audit. Um, and so you can go through and get a handle on all of your marketing stuff. Uh, a lot of times we talk to CEOs and they don't even know where they're marketing or how to access all of their stuff. And so we want to make sure that you know that whether you use us as an agency or not. Um, coming up on Marketing Rocket Fuel, um, we're going to be talking uh, in the next episode about marketing directors. Who is the marketing director? What do they do? And uh, what role do they play in your company? Uh, if you if this is your first time joining us or if it's your 12th time joining us and you haven't liked, commented, or subscribed yet, do all of those things. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell. That really helps us out. We are a relatively new channel, and uh, and every our, our subscribers are pretty transparent. Uh, we put that out there. Um, so we don't have a million subscribers yet. Uh, we are still trying to hit triple digits, but that's fine. If you find this content useful, like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know, and let us know what we could be doing better, uh, what's going to be useful to you. Uh, Michael, take us out. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for being with us this, uh, this morning or whenever you're listening to this or watching it. Uh, we look forward to uh, providing you guys with uh, more content like this. Drew, great seeing you this morning, and uh, have a good day. Guys. All right. See you next time, Michael. Bye.